Afternoon, welcome to Unplug Live for our fifth show of the season where we discuss art, music, all things creative. Coming up, we have a musical guest, but first we're talking to a local artist as we do every week. Please welcome Melinda Harper. Uh, hearing a new song, our reaction can be swayed by the song's title, what we know already about the artist and the songs, its similarities to other songs. Is truly abstract painting about having no reference point at all when seeing the work? Is it an opportunity to experience the act of just looking in its purest form and having an emotional reaction that isn't swayed by outside information? Yeah, look, often yes, but then there are other, t I mean, I think it's sort of, there are other times that I would say that um, more recently I've really looked at the landscape and colouring landscape. So it's not that I'm painting the landscape, but it's, you know, the colour of the sky, leaves. So there are influences, and I think, um, but it is non-objective. So it's not a picture of the landscape, but it's influenced by the kind of world that I live in. Uh, I caught this phrase in another description of your work. Her investigations of colour and form are also intensely felt. Visual responses to lived experience embodied in her words, the act of looking, the obvious, the precise and the precious. I'm interested in the idea of an abstract painting being the visual response to an actual lived experience. Can you elaborate on this idea? In your daily life, would you have an experience and have a flash of inspiration as to how that might be expressed on the canvas? Yeah, I think so. I think um, walking is a big thing, being in the, you know, in the bush. Um, I think when I lived in, I've only recently moved, it was, I've been there about 18 months. Um, in Melbourne, it would have been different sorts of experiences. And where are you now? I'm in Castle, just outside of Castlemaine. Um, so this whole walking thing and being in the landscape is quite a new thing. Um, but it is a direct response to my life now. And I think probably all my paintings, wherever I've been, have been a response. A direct visual response? Yeah, visual, yeah. So you might take a lot of inspiration when you are out walking yeah. and wherever you live. And what is it you see? You feel combinations of colour or you... Yeah, and also just, um, however corny this might sound, but, um, you know, trees moving, you know, and that might lead me to look at somebody like Turner, you know, the great sky painter, um, who verges, you know, on abstraction sometimes. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm just taking inspiration. And the same with fiction and writing, I, you know. So colour, in a way, becomes the content of the work sometimes. Is abstract art is a unique passion in life. When did you realise that your creative outlet was best expressed in the shapes and colours of paint? Uh, look, I've been doing abstract paintings even um, since I was about 16, so, and I'm 50, so I've always been drawn to that language. I grew up in Canberra, the National Gallery opened, so I saw all those sort of Jackson Pollock and Hans Hoffman and just greatly influenced I was going to say, we're in the NGV's Australian art collection, mm. which is what this whole building is. I mean, was there, when you were growing up, was there any particular Australian artist which caught your eye that might have been uh, inspiring for you in a big way when you first... Yep. Uh, I think Grace Crowley, you know, Roger Kemp, you know, that ceiling at the the other building, um, Rolf Borlison. Was that the ceiling? You know, he did the stained glass. In the Grand Hall. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. Roger Kemp. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, lots of Australian, and a lot of the women like uh, Margaret Preston, even though that's not abstract, there's still, you know, a great influence. Because people would be intrigued as to the process when, I mean, your, your, your picture over there's a series of vertical lines mm. and colours and circles on it, and just what, you know, like, is that, is that something you would do in a day in a burst of activity, or is, it, you know, is something as that abstract to someone like myself, you know, is it something that... Would you do a piece over a period of time? Would you have a simple colour up on a canvas and then, you know, Cause struggle to yeah. know what to do with yeah. that next? Absolutely. You know, it's a fascinating it's life, a not, you know. Um, because my paintings are also oil paint, it slows the process down, so I can't do a painting in a day. So each stripe, I have to let that dry. Um, so it, there's quite a long process, which I really like, because it means that I can change, I can really think about what I'm doing and change. Is the painting the start of the process? I mean, a lot of people might keep diaries or journals. Songwriters might just, you know, throw things into yeah. their phone or something. Do you no, I, I sketch? For, does it come from any other way or wh what's yeah. the beginning? I, I do lots of sketchbooks and lots of uh, writing. Um, 
to record because I can't often remember the colours that I'm interested in. Tell us about the writing. What is, what is that? It's mainly just about the colours that I'm interested in. So you might get down with a pen and paper and just... Yeah. just like and I might take that on a walk. Yeah. So, because really, you know, I've got two small children and I kind of forget it all. Yeah. So I have to, Just you know, run into write. the country. Yeah. Write it all down. Yeah. yeah. Oh. I read this in the description of your work. Harper painted with no overall plan, deciding the work was complete when an overall balance of activity was achieved that shifts the viewer's focus restlessly across the painted surface. When making an abstract work, do you have the viewer's reaction firmly in mind? Is that the driving force to work towards altering the viewer's mood in a particular way? As in when you're working, is, is that response what is in your mind? Look, I think sometimes. Sometimes it's not at all. I think with those works, there was uh, a series of four and I was really interested in the optical shift between the collage on top um, and I was interested in the collage not being perfect circles. Which what do you mean optical shift? The eye, you know, going between the stripes and then the, the co you know, the little things that are stuck on. I didn't paint those on because then it would have been flat. So I wanted that kind of um, experience of the height and the, what's on the back, yeah. A few weeks back, we discussed the work of Ludwig Hirschfeld Mack, a German artist who studied under Paul Klee and Wassily Kandinsky at the Bauhaus and came to Australia to work. I bring him up because Ludwig developed coloured light music. I believe he lived in Adelaide for a while, this German fellow. A light and colour modulator which provided a visual translation of music in colour. And abstract art and what you're working on is all about colours mm. and the relationship to them. It's interesting, the idea of simple combinations of colour expressing such a deep range of different emotions, and in this case, the expression of music. Do you feel everyone in their daily life is responding emotionally to the colours around them? Is it your challenge to recognise these interactions when you have them yourself? And what, what is that moment like when it will, and where does it come from when you go, ah, there's a painting in this in relation to your day-to-day -day life, if there is one? It's sort of different all the time. There's not one process. Um, and probably more recently, it's a very, very slow process. You know, it feels like it's really, you know, it takes a long the time. The actual painting of yeah. pieces? Yeah. yeah. So, you know, it can take nine months to do a painting um, because I'm kind of changing my ideas as I go. Um, so there's not one, you know, I can't say that there's one... Like, I think the music, what you've described is that is quite a different experience. Can you explain the feeling of knowing when a painting is at a finished point? I mean, in abstract art, I don't mean to sound naive, but you might walk into a gallery, there would be a painting of just one colour or mm. two colours. Mm. I mean, do you, when, when working in something very simple and regimented, can you explain the feeling of when you think, no, that's it, and what that might? Is it just simply you've applied colours, combinations and then wham you feel an emotion leave it at that point yeah but I find that quite difficult you know because yeah. sometimes I just keep I don't overpaint either it's only a recent thing but um, so often when it's filled in it's finished can you have you taken them too far do you have moments where you go yeah. this yeah. is a great painting I'll add a little more yeah and then yeah. it's too late yeah <laughs> <laughs> and then you're trying to rescue it yeah um, I very much enjoyed talking to yeah. an abstract painter. Mm -hmm. This is very new for me. I think a lot of people would have enjoyed it. So nice talking to you. Yeah. And Thank uh, you. thanks for being here. Thanks. Appreciate it. Thank you.